Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and Mac OS High Sierra has been released and is now available for most Macs 2009 and on. There are a few exceptions, but for the most part, anything 2009, 2010 and newer, Mac OS High Sierra is available. Now, there are some minor changes compared to the previous year. Every other year or so, Apple further refines their different Mac OS updates. So with Yosemite, we had Yosemite, then El Capitan. El Capitan is a place within Yosemite and therefore is a refinement of the same thing. This year we have Sierra and then Mac OS High Sierra, which is a refinement of the previous version. The same idea, so there's more refinements this time than last time, and it's a very stable release so far. Now the first major change is the Apple file system, and the Apple file system has made its way onto the iOS platform, but now it's on Mac OS, with the exception of Fusion Drives, and that will be coming later on. But right now you've got APFS or Apple file system on Mac OS High Sierra, and that allows for 64 bit architecture. It's completely new and it makes it more responsive. It also gives you greater security with built in encryption and a lot of other things such as crash, crash safe protections that are built right into the operating system to really help it be much more stable than it already is. The next thing that's pretty significant is the HEVC codec or video codec. What that allows is for better compression, up to 40% better compression on your MacBook when it comes to video. So that means things such as streaming video, if it uses that codec, can take less bandwidth. It also means if you're recording video with your iPhone, it's going to take less storage on your iPhone and your Mac because they're both using HEVC now. So that's a nice new little feature that's refined within Mac OS High Sierra. Something else that we don't see initially is Metal 2. We have better refinement and better use of the GPU or graphics processing unit within your MacBook. So if you have a MacBook Pro with a high-end graphics card or you've got an external graphics card that's even better, you can now use external graphics cards if it's supported with Thunderbolt 3. I've done a separate video on that to show you what that's all about and I'll link that in the video and in the description below. But basically you'll get much better graphic performance up to the ability to play VR games such as using an Oculus Rift or HTC Vive. You can play games within that as long as you have a supported Mac or an external GPU that's powerful enough. Now let's get into the Mac itself and what we can actually see that's new. The first thing is Photos. So Photos has been refined and updated. And as you can see here, this is a bunch of different photos I took of the Note 8 when I was taking uh, different photos for the video. And I take many different ones for the thumbnails. And as you can see, we've got the big type that we have in iOS. So they've organized this a little bit better to be clearer as to what's what. And also on the left, they've made the file or sidebar a little bit clearer as well. So on the left, you'll see that we have photos and memories just like we did before, but they also organize imports a little bit better this time around where they're grouped a little bit more accordingly and it's just easier to see in general. One thing I won't show though is people, the faces are bigger and there's better face recognition. So that's updated. Now memories is updated as well. And within memories, we have new recognition for things. So here, this doesn't look really spectacular or anything. It just grouped them together. But now it supports pets, babies, outdoor activities, performances, weddings, birthdays, and sporting events all built into photos, saving your, your data privately and securely, and it's using machine learning on the Mac itself, not in the cloud to do that. So it's really pretty nice and it groups things together. Now these aren't really significant, but it creates a little slideshow as well, and it just looks nice altogether. Now let's go back. Now let me show you some of the other features that are new. So some of the new things have to do with batch editing. So that means we can select multiple photos and maybe we wanna rotate these three photos. We just click the button up here and now all three rotate at once. And we can do that with a couple other things as well, but that's the easiest way to maybe rotate a photo if you need to do that or multiple photos that you may have taken one way or the other and need to have them set the direction that you need. You can also edit easier using your favorite editing program. So if you option click or right click, you can go to edit with and then go to Pixelmator for example. It opens up Pixelmator and it's just an easier way to move between photos and your favorite editing app. So that's a really nice feature that I've been looking for for quite some time. Now we have better editing built in as well. So if I open up this photo, I can also auto edit it, but if I want to go into edit and adjust things like curves, I can now do that. 
So let's see if we can find curves. It's down here. We can better adjust this. You can adjust the curves however you'd like. And when you're done with it, you can just hit done. There's also new photo filters as well built in. Uh, a lot of people like those, so those are built in and we'll hit done. And then we have some better sharing options. So maybe I edited this, now I wanna share it. I can click up here and go to share and we have more options. And we can set even more options by clicking on more depending on what application supports it. So here's some things in here as well uh, that aren't relevant to me, but maybe to someone else. One final thing we can do with editing has to do with not only portrait mode editing, if you have an iPhone 8 or newer or 8 plus iPhone 10, or maybe even newer depending on when you're watching this, we have portrait mode built in with the different filter effects here. So we have some different lighting effects and also we can edit live photos more clearly as well right within photos itself. So instead of having to do that on your device, you can edit them here, maybe make them bounce back, things like that. The same effects you can do on your iPhone 8 Plus, you can do right in the Photos app. So let's get out of Photos and let's talk a little bit more about Safari. Now Safari has a couple updates, some are pretty neat. So we'll go to my website here. And here's my website, this is the last video I did. And one of the things we can do is customize the website specifically for how we're browsing it. So maybe I wanna zoom here and leave it zoomed in more often. So every time I come back, it stays zoomed. Well, I can right click the top here and go to settings for this website. And in settings for this website, I can tell it to use reader all the time when available. I can lock it to that, that's a new feature as well. I can enable content blockers, stop media with sound. That's also a new feature built in. So maybe you go to one of those websites where you've got a video that auto plays. Safari will stop that by itself. It won't play automatically unless you want it to. So you can allow all autoplay, stop media with sound, or never autoplay. It's up to you, and that's just by right-clicking your address bar. It's really nice, and I'm very happy to see that. Now, one of the things you can't see is better tracking prevention. So maybe you go to your favorite search engine, you go to a website, and they like to track where you're going. Well, they can't do that as easily anymore because Apple's using machine learning within Safari to block those trackers and kind of make it look like you're more anonymous on the web. So that makes it really nice. So you don't have that is built in as, as well if you're using Safari. The next thing is Siri. Now, I don't really use Siri too much on my Mac, but you do have the option and it's updated with the new voice that's on the newer iPhones that was updated with iOS 11, but also it can be your DJ now. So you can tell it to play your favorite songs and music, and it's based on your favorite selection. So let's try something. Play something relaxing. So it opens up iTunes, and I have to mute this so we can't hear it, but right here it's playing some chill music. It just picks something based on what it thought I might like, and that's all built in to macOS High Sierra. Siri can also tell you more about the music you're listening to, about artists and things like that as well. One of the new features they've added is real simple, but it's built into Spotlight. You can go there by clicking the magnifying glass here or hitting Command Space and you can search for flights. So here I typed in Delta 52. I just guessed, I wasn't sure what this is, and it tells me where it is, where it went to. We can get a little more information here and see where it is and where it's going. So it's all built in and it's really simple and something I'll probably end up using in the future. The next thing is FaceTime. I'm not going to open that, but you can just save a photo just like you can on FaceTime on your phone. They've added that to the Mac. Also within Mail, they've just updated Search, so that's not a big deal, but within the Mail app, you can up, they've updated Search and made it Search a little bit faster. And then in Notes, they've added a couple little features. So let me open Notes, and in Notes, you'll see I have some notes for this video, and then here's the previous video, and just some ideas of what things I'm going to make. I often use Notes for that. Now, if I wanna pin these to the top, I can do that now by swiping to the right. Use two fingers, swipe to the right, and now these two will stay at the top. If I wanna do that with Note 9, I hit pin, it goes up here. So it goes above whatever you're clicked on and it just sticks there. So that's a real simple feature. You can also add tables to notes. So maybe we want this note, maybe we'll create a new one. We wanna add a table, we can create tables and add more or less or whatever we wanna do. 
we can move these around and now we just have tables within notes as well it's really simple and just a few extra features you have all the features you have on ipad as well all kept right here and synced with icloud and that's the next thing they've updated icloud to make it more easy to share with people using a link or something along those lines maybe we go into finder and we want to share this image file we can now click here and we can either add a person to share it to them with with a link maybe we add people and now we can send it through a message we can copy the link we can send it to twitter airdrop it send it in linkedin linkedin and we also have options down here as to who can actually change it or even see it so those are all built in now right into the os very simple and that is pretty much it Everything else is on the back end. There's not a whole lot of other new features. There's this new wallpaper in the background that's part of it. So that's it for Mac OS High Sierra. That hopefully will give you a good idea of everything that's new. And there's probably some things that we don't know about that are in the background as well that are just little refinements, tweaks here and there. But if there's anything else you found that's significant, let us know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.